From the dawn of civilization to the modern era, humanity has had the drive to explore. We went from barely crossing the Atlantic just a few centuries ago to putting a man on the moon. The natural next step would be a manned mission to Mars. Putting people on the red planet would be an achievement that would go down in the history books forever. But that's not what the populace has in mind. The current plan is to send people to Mars and then have them live there for a little while. The thought behind this is, is that if anything happens on Earth, like what happened with OnlyFans, then humanity would have an outpost somewhere else and could carry on existing. So I noticed that in the news that you, our lord and savior, Elon Musk, want to detonate the Earth. Will the Earth's self-destructing affect my crypto game? Wow, that meeting was really boring. So thank you, Mom. What were we talking about again? Oh, right, Mars colony. A colony sounds like a great idea and all until you realize that Mars is far away. Really, really far away. As in 33 million miles away at the closest point to Earth. For some perspective, it takes three minutes for light to go from Earth to Mars. And that's still slower than the average Redditor coming to my house to punt me out of my window because I criticized Elon Musk. But the huge distance has nothing on the cost. It would be hundreds of billions of dollars, possibly even trillions, to make this happen. The colony would have to pay for these billions somehow, but there's just no real way of doing that. Right now, the main source of income for the colony would be tourism. But the trip's expense would have to cover the expense of the flight, the travel comforts, the funds of shipping supplies there, in addition to keeping the habitat livable. Just to barely break even, the trip would have to cost billions of dollars, and only our supreme overlords have pockets this deep. Let's put the money issue aside and talk about popular opinion. A 2018 survey of American adults was taken to see what people wanted NASA to prioritize in their endeavor. The survey revealed that 45% of people said, Frick you, Elon, we don't want to go to Mars. 37% of people didn't really care either way. And only 18% of survey respondents believed that going to Mars should be NASA's top priority. Now, what's interesting to me is that in this survey, 31% of respondents said the search for alien life should be in NASA's top priority. This next point will upset those 31% of people because another thing about starting a colony on Mars is that it would basically end the search for life on the red planet. The search would end because humans are biological organisms and biological organisms carry bacteria and other microorganisms. And if the life we find on the red planet is similar to life on Earth, then we could never really be sure if what we found was a piece of life that an astronaut carried over or if it's actually a Martian bacteria. Right now, we don't have to worry about mixing up Martian organisms with those here on Earth, and I would like to keep it that way. Being able to confirm that there is life on Mars is such an amazing opportunity that we would be just throwing away if we went there. Like life, energy is kind of hard to find on Mars. To understand this point better, think of Earth as a reasonable, logical human being, and then imagine Mars as a flat Earther. Kind of like how the Flat Earther denies most, if not all, facts and logic from entering their brain, so does Mars with energy. The energy source from the Sun, or solar, is terrible, because like the Flat Earther, it is so far removed from what is factual and true. Kind of like how Mars is so far removed from the Sun's Goldilocks range. And whenever facts reach the brain of the Flat Earther, a lot of it is obscured and rejected. Kind of like what the dust storms do to the light that reaches Mars. But Greg, there are other sources of energy. That is true. Like the conspiracy theorist's brain, wind power is just less efficient. A 100 mile per hour wind on Mars would be a light breeze due to the sparseness of the atmosphere. So, because of the sparseness of Mars' atmosphere, wind power won't work. Well, another option for a power source could be nuclear. But nuclear would be extremely costly to get up to Mars. Nuclear power takes a lot of things to get going, and there's a lot of materials and variants that could go wrong, that could break, and shipping those materials up there would be extremely expensive. So it seems like getting energy on Mars will be a big, fat pain. Another thing that would be in pain is our bodies. Mars is an awful terrible place to go for us in our flesh suits. The first problem will be radiation, which could cause radiation burn, cancer, and cardiovascular issues. But the radiation pales in comparison to the gravity issue. Humans were made to live in gravity, and we were taken out of said gravity. We have more cardiovascular problems and issues with our cells. 
But the big problem is in our heart or cells. It's actually in our bones and muscles. Back in the 60s, when the Apollo missions took place, the astronauts had to be carried out of the capsule because they were so weak. So the astronauts started to work out a lot in space. But even then, after being on Earth for a long time, some astronauts continued to have back pain after their six-month stay on the ISS. The issue would be way lessened on Mars because there is gravity, but after an extended stay of, I don't know, like two years, the muscle and bone would severely weaken even with intense exercise. There's just no real way of simulating Earth's gravity in space or on another planet yet, and that is an essential, essential thing to have. And I believe it will come soon, but right now, all it looks like to me is more health risks. Despite all of this, a lot of mega chads, or albeit crazy people, may still want to go there. Why? Let's talk about your trip for a second. You're going to be stuck in a puny tin can for months upon months, day in, day out, suspended in the icy blackness of space. Then, once you get on Mars, you'll be done, right? Well, you'll actually be stuck in another tin can for around two years. The only time outside will be in a spacesuit just to pick up some supplies. Is this a way to live? I mean, it depends on the person. You have someone that goes out all the time, this would be their personal hell, and then you have someone like me, who didn't leave the house at all for an entire week one time. And then you have the person that hasn't left their house for an entire month. Colonizing Mars would be a really bad idea right now. There's no real economic reason to do so. And besides, wouldn't it be better if we all just made Earth a better place instead of running away from our problems? Ha! Oh my gosh, that's funny. No, we're all gonna die. But thanks for watching the video. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want more, and uh, see ya.